All right, I'm gonna go over a few problems on the assignments that are posted. So uh, let me start with uh, unit five, topic one. I'll just pick a couple of problems from each, each area and kind of work with you on that. So here's question one, if you're struggling with how to do these, what you're gonna do, it says, which of the functions represent exponential growth? Growth looks like that, and then decay looks like that. So growth will be going up as it goes to the right and decay will be decreasing as it goes to the right. So we can, without knowing the rules of these, we can just graph each one if you want. I'd put them in Desmos. So let's take these answer choices. Okay, so this problem is a decay. And even though it has a base that's greater than one, um, that negative X is flipping it. So if that negative X weren't there, it would be growth. But that's decay. So it's not that one. All right. Let's see. And put the other three in. All right, so looking at all four of these, uh, they all seem to be decay except for the blue one. Uh, the blue one is this one, and that's because this is a positive x in the exponent, and 5 divided by 4 is a number bigger than 1. So it's going to be that one right there, 0 0.7 parentheses 5 divided by 4 to the x power. All right, let's look at a couple other types. Uh, let's look at number 5. All right, question number five wants to know how the function y equals five to the x power transforms to the new function y equals 3.2 parentheses five to the x minus two minus seven. Well, I would start with the first number here. If, if it does have a negative, then it would be reflected over the x-axis. But since it does not lead with a negative, it will not be reflected. If the leading number after the negative is, is a number bigger than one, it's gonna stretch it. So since it's 3.2, we'll say it's stretched. It cannot be compressed if it's stretched, so we click no on that. If that number is between zero and one, for instance, 0 0.2, that would be a compressed and not a stretched. All right, the base stays the same, so let's look in the exponent. In the exponent, it says x minus two. That means it's gonna go right two units. It does the opposite of the sign on the x-axis. So if that said x plus two, it would be left at two. So it does not go left, but it does go right two. And the minus seven at the end means that it's going to go down seven, therefore will not go up. So that's an example of a, a shift function you could answer. That's question number five on unit five, topic one. Let's look at some other types. All right, let's look at number eight. Um, number eight, it says the table models an exponential function find f of 10. On that problem, you wanna figure out the multiplication pattern. So I could look at one, three, nine, 27, and 81. And with a little bit of math, looks like that's being multiplied by three each time. One times three is three. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times 3 is 81. 
So what I like to do is when I set up my equation, that base is what's being multiplied. So since, since it's being multiplied by three, that would be your three. The A value is your starting value. When X equals zero. And that's, that part's important. You don't want X equal to be one, you want it to be zero. So since X is zero here, that A value is gonna be one. And since it's multiplying by three, then that B value is gonna be three. So it's gonna be y equals one times three to the x power. And so now if I wanna find what is f of 10, I'm just gonna plug in 10 for that. So 10 will be my x value. And I'll use the calculator for that. So that's going to be five fifty nine thousand zero four nine fifty nine zero four nine. 59049, 59049. There's other ways to get that. You can also just multiply the table and keep the pattern going, which is totally fine with me. But that's the short way that I would use. All right, let's look at the next one. Let's see, that's number eight. So let's look at some other ones. 11 is kind of tricky. Let's take a look at that. So with 11, it gives you a starting value of negative 4096. But in this case, it's not going up. It's going down. So let me write that table out. All right, thanks for bearing with me on that. So on this problem here, we wanna know what it's being multiplied by, but since it's going down, it's gonna be multiplied by a fraction. So I can do this, I can figure that out by taking this number and dividing by that number. If I do negative 2048 divided by negative 4096, we can figure out what it's being multiplied by. So let's do that in Desmos. So it looks like it's saying 0 0.5. In other words, it's being divided by two. Dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. So your base is gonna be 0 0.5, or you can say one half as a fraction. Now your A value, that's the value where X is zero. So your A value is gonna be negative zero, negative four zero nine six. So you can say y equals negative four zero nine six times one half to the x power. And I want to know f of ten, so I'll plug in ten. And that gets me negative four. So the answer to that question would be negative four. 
All right, a couple others. Let's do some exponential growth and decay. We'll do We'll do 12, 13, 14, and 15. So that way you get an idea of two types. All right, so number 12 says an investment of 75,000 increases at a rate of 12.5% each year. Um, let T represent the number of years and A of T represent the amount of year, T years, which function models this situation. 75,000 is your initial amount. As you can see, that's gonna be put out front. Since it's increasing, that's gonna be growth. And what we wanna do on that is we want to add that to one. So the growth model looks like capital A, which is your final amount, equals A times one plus R to the T power. That represents exponential growth. And since your beginning value is 75,000, and your rate is 12.5%, we wanna convert that to a decimal. So we're gonna take that 12.5, and we're gonna move the decimal place over to the left two spots, and that's gonna make it become 1 point, 0.125. If you wanna use an operation to get that move, you just divide by 100. So that's gonna get added to one. and that's gonna become 75,000, parentheses 1.125 raised to the T power. So that'll be your function. And so once you get the function, then you move on to the problem afterward and you evaluate it. In the case of question 13, it's gonna use the same number, 75,000 and 12.5%, but it does want to know what's the value going to be after 30 years. So in that case, we plug 30 in for T. So we'll do 75,000, 1.125 raised to the 30th power. Plug that in your calculator. And you get a pretty big number. Now it does say round to the nearest cent. Cents are dollars and cents. The dollar part would be 2562847 or 2568247. And then the cent part would be 0 0.87, 87 cents. That 126 isn't really important. So our answer would be 2568247.87. Let me fix that, 2568247.87. That's $2,568,247.87. But you can't put the dollar symbol or commas in there, so just put the numbers. Okay, uh, let's do a decay and then I'll be done with this uh, lesson. So let's do 14 and 15. Okay, 14, a population of 752,000 people decreases at a rate of 1.4% each year. What's the, uh, the number of years in A of T represent the amount after T years? Which function models the situation? So your starting amount is 752,000. As you can see, that's gonna be the first number. The decreasing means that instead of being one plus R, you're gonna do one minus R. But the A, the R, and the T, and capital A will all be in the same spot. But since the rate is gonna be subtracted from one, we have to, again, convert that to a decimal. So 1.4% as a decimal.
would be 0 0.014. And you can get that by moving it over to the left or dividing by 100. Next, we subtract that from 1, making sure that your, um, your leading number 752000 is out front. one minus 0 0.014 to the t power. And one minus 0 0.014, you know, 0 0.014 is a pretty small number. So that's actually not going to, it's gonna keep it pretty close to one. Think about it like this, that's 1.4% out of, from 100%, that's 98.6%. So it's gonna be 0.986 inside the, parentheses. So that will be your function. And you can put a zero to the front if you want. It's not going to change that. As long as that decimal is right before the nine, you're good. So the question leading after number 14 is, is going to involve those same numbers and scenarios. The only difference is it's going to give you amount of time. So let's look at 15. Question says to the nearest whole number, what will the population be after 18 years? So we're going to plug in 18. For the T and put that in the calculator. 752,000 parentheses 0.986 raised to the 18th power. So that's going to be 5834482. And the question, we're talking about people, so we don't have to give a decimal. It says to the nearest whole number. So we'll just put in 583448. You don't need all the decimals for that. 583448 is just fine. All right, um, well, since no one is able to attend the session, I hope going over those problems gives you a little bit of insight as to how to work them out. Um, I'm not gonna go over any on the topic two assignment today on this one, but I'll put another video up and I'll host another Zoom session Monday. So that way, if anybody needs some help with that, maybe I can answer your questions live. But since it has been half an hour, I'm going to end the session. It's about two o'clock. so. Um, hopefully this video does help you if you were not able to attend this session or if you just needed help but weren't able to get help through um, Remind or whatever you try to get help with. All right, you have a good afternoon.